uh, introduce the message tonight, what got me to thinking about this. Proverbs chapter 18, very familiar verse. You ought to memorize this verse of Scripture. Every Christian needs, needs to know this verse. It'll, it'll help you in the hard time. Uh, you ought to remember it. Proverbs chapter 18, and I want you to look at this. Verse number 24. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24. Please look at this scripture tonight. And it says this. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. I want to introduce the message and I'll tell you the title in a minute. Everywhere I go, try to, every store, every gas station, grocery store, I usually, I either give them a track or tell them the Lord loves them or both. Nine times out of ten. I'm not sitting at the break. I'm just telling you that's just the way I do. I've always done it. God has blessed it mightily over the years. The other night, I told uh, uh, a lady at the, uh, I think it was at the, it was a, she was behind the cash register, and it was down there. You're not going to believe this. You should be proud of me. I was at Hobby Lobby. You ought to be proud of me. I'm telling you, that goes against everything that a man has and is. Uh, I took my wife out on a date, and uh, we don't get to do that very often. I, like the second time, me and her have been somewhere just by herself, and good night, half the summer. But I said, all right, we're going to go Friday night, and I was not. I said, whatever you want to Wherever you want to go, listen, I eat at Cracker Barrel and went to Hobby Lobby. Now, you don't, you don't, don't know what that's, that's like, that's like uh, it'd be the equivalent of putting you out there in the ditch and letting somebody hit you with rocks or something. I mean, it's, that's how bad I hate places like that. And uh, uh, so I went in, and I was good, too. Well, I didn't complain. I didn't say, where are they at? Why ain't they hurrying? Where's our food? We had a little food there at Cracker Barrel, and she wanted to go to Hobby Lobby. I really didn't want to, but I said, all right because we're going to get in some fall decorations and stuff for in here. So we was in there, and when I check out at the, at the place, I always say, and uh, you remember, Jesus loves you, or I'll give him a track, and I'll say, this will tell you about your best friend. And I do that all the time, all the time. And I did that the other night, and I, I told that girl, I said, here you go, this will tell you about your best friend. Lord, and she looked at me and she said, I needed that. And she was just a young lady probably in her 20s. And that happens a lot of times. That happens, you don't know what people's going through. You don't know what kind of battles they may be fighting. That person you're sitting beside tonight may be that close to just giving up on life and everything. And so I want to preach on that little subject tonight. Uh, he's your best friend. He's your best friend. He, not he is your best friend. He's your best He's your best. That's the old southern way of saying it. He's your best friend. He's your best friend. And I want to talk about that tonight. And if you're a Christian here tonight, this will help you. I need to get myself once in a while and realize that. When, when uh, I, I've, I've been around a while now, and I noticed when uh, uh, in time gone by when I was helping people or uh, being around me helped them, I had a lot of friends. You know, you got a lot of friends when you're making money and you're uh, doing well on the social ladder and you're, oh boy, you got, you're not a nice house or you got all kinds of friends. And then, then when tide turns and you're down and you're, it's costing them to be your friend, instead of benefiting them, they're gone. Now, that was not a real friend to start with. If somebody just hanging around you because of uh, they can use you to climb up the ladder, that's why them poor... Poor pitiful people in Hollywood. They don't know who their friend is, who they're not. Somebody's always after their money. All trying to uh, get them in here, you know. You see uh, uh, some of uh, one of those movie stars, and she's 20 years old and marries Howard Hughes or somebody. Uh, not Howard Hughes, but Hugh Hefner, one of them old perverts uh, like that. And, uh, and you think, you know, that's so sad that when you got all that money and fame, you don't even know who your friends are. One good thing about being poor, brother, you know who your friends are real, ain't that right? That's right, hey, amen. Thank God for that. If you're a poor old uh, hick redneck like us, you got friends, you know they're real. They're not there just to mooch off of you. And uh, prosperity makes friends, they say. Adversity tries them. Uh, and friends are somebody that, real friends are somebody that won't forsake you in a jam. They say that when you die, 
if you've got five real friends, real friends, you've done good. And I preached on this not long ago, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna reiterate it just very briefly for somebody that might need it here tonight. That this woman was out there and she's getting ready to commit suicide and she and she jumped off in the river and drowned herself. And uh, everybody was standing around saying, oh, how awful, how awful. And this uh, little boy said, Daddy, why did she do that? He said, she didn't have no friends, son. And he said, well, she ain't gonna find no friends in the river. And that's true, that's true, you know. You ain't gonna find no friends in the river. And you know what you do? You say, well, I ain't got no friends, so I'm gonna go to the club in Hickory. You ain't gonna find none in the club in Hickory. Uh, you ain't gonna find none in a, in a hellhole drug dealer house in Charlotte. You're not gonna find no friends at the crack house. You're not gonna find no friend, friends where the meth heads are. I mean, it might be at first they might give you something to start with, but boy, you'll find out right quick. It's a dog. You'll be standing out there on the side of the interstate with a sign uh, trying to get enough money to eat off of. This world's not your friend, people. This world, get it through your head, young people. This world is not your friend. They'll, 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 they'll butter up to you real close and, and they'll get you in trouble and then turn around and walk off right when you really need them. They'll make you feel like you've got to do things. I, I remember kids at school, they'd try to get girls to do stuff or boy, get drunk or go somewhere or something like that and then the girl would do it and then all the boys would laugh about them laugh, and talk about them at school and make fun of them. And that poor girl, all she wanted was just somebody that, that cared about her and, and liked her. I will tell you tonight, girls, I'm going to tell you he's your best friend. He is your best friend, kids. He is your best friend, young adults. He's your best friend, mamas and daddies. Uh, listen, if you've got him, it don't matter if you've got another friend in this world, Jesus is your best friend. He's your best friend. I want to say a few things about it. He, he's, a, he's a special friend. He's holy. He's wise. He's eternal. He's strong. The Bible said in Hebrews 7, he's holy, separate from sinners. He never did anything wrong. Now think about that. Think about that. Jesus never done one thing wrong. He lived 33 and one half years on this earth, never done anything wrong, never. He never took one step out of God's will, never said one word that wasn't right. I mean, think about that. That's hard for us to imagine. It, there ain't nobody in here that would want your all your life and words and thoughts and dreams to be showed on that screen for the last week. And you know it. Amen? You know it. I mean, we're, we're, just, we're just blobs of sin. We got sin all over us, around us all the time. And if it wasn't for the grace of God, sin would completely run our life. But Jesus had no sin. And he had absolutely no sin. And think about this now. Somebody like that is going to fellowship with somebody like me and you. He's my best friend. He's your best friend. You say, my goodness, somebody that high, somebody that holy. You know what's so good about Jesus being your friend? Because he knows all about you and still loves you anyway. I've seen people say, boy, I really like those so-and-so until I got to know them. I, I've heard people say, well, I wish, I, I wish she wasn't pregnant. Uh, I, Lord, I hate her guts. Now, you should have learned her a little bit better, amen. You got the cart before the horse, big boy. I mean, you, you messed around there and made a mistake. I've heard people say, well, I really thought they was great when I first met them, but the more I get to know them, ugh, ugh, I'm telling you something tonight. Jesus Christ knows all our faults. He knows all our failures. He knows our down sittings and our uprising. He understands our thoughts afar off and still is our friend. Thank God. I'm glad tonight that he's my friend. He's my special friend. A friend, listen to me, a friend is somebody with whom you can think out loud. That means when you're really burdened and you're tore up and you're having problems and aggravated. Uh, uh, I don't do this very often. I'm a man, and I usually keep stuff in, but a lot of people, they feel like they have to have somebody to talk to about everything or they'll die. Now, I, I'm not like that. I, I've been there a few times in my life, but there's been a few times in my life when I thought, man, I've got to, I've got to have somebody that I can unload this on. Have you ever felt like you had to have somebody you could just... Spill your gut on, you know. Uh, preachers do that to me once in a while. They come up and say, man, I just need somebody to, to unload on, preacher. And I say, all right, go ahead. I've unloaded on people. Dump it on me. I can take it. And you know what? I know I, somebody told me not long ago. They said, Brother Danny, 
uh, can I tell you something in confidence? And I say, yes, yes, you can. And they say, look, I talked to another preacher, and I'm scared to tell him because as soon as I tell him, he goes and tells everybody, he tells his wife, and she tells everybody, and they tell the deacon's wife, and they tell everybody, and they tell the Sunday school teachers, and they tell everybody. She said, I can't tell. She said, can I trust you? And I said, all right. If I tell you I ain't going to tell it, then I'm not going to. And I say, all right. And you know, sometimes you think, I'm really afraid to tell this person how bad I really am or how bad I'm messed up or how full of the devil I am I, because, Lord, if they knew that, they'd think I... How many of y'all have had a problem? You think, gosh, I can't tell nobody because if I did, they'd think I'm off. Ain't you glad tonight, glory to God, that you can go to him and say, Lord, you know I'm a sorry God dog. Lord, you know I'm awful. And he won't turn his back on you. He won't say, no, I ain't having nothing to do with you. But he'll just come around and say, listen, I already knew that. He knows you before you even told him, glory to God. Hallelujah! And he'll still fellowship with us anyway. You ought to be glad of that tonight, saint of God. Amen. Hallelujah. He is a special friend. He is a special friend. He's a special friend. He's a friend with whom you can think out loud. That's pretty good, buddy. I'm telling you tonight, I, I want to say number two tonight, he's your best friend. He's a sympathetic friend. He's a sympathetic friend. He's approachable. He's approachable. He ain't like, oh my goodness, now I, I need to talk to the Lord, and I'm mad, but could not, uh, Mary, come here a minute. If I pray to you, could you talk to him? I know some people that believe like that, uh, don't you? That the entire Catholic Church teaches that Mary can get on his good side better than you can, so you're better off to go through her and get to Jesus. Uh, that, uh, that is in the same class as Papa Smurf, Mama Smurf, uh, uh, Pee Wee, and uh, Herman, and and the Jet Set and the Care Bears. That, that's where that kind of philosophy falls into. Mary couldn't save a dead horse. I mean, she's a sinner just like me and you. She had to come. You know, she had to be a saved just like me and you did. The only thing special about Mary is she was a chosen vessel for the bear God's son into this world. But I'm telling you, we don't have to say uh, John the Baptist, one of the saints. Oh, we pray to you, saints. Would you ask Jesus to ask God to help us because we can't go? No, 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 no. You know what I can do as his child? I can walk right in the front door, right there is God on his throne, walk right past the Holy of Holies and say, Dear Lord, I'm your child. I need, he's approachable. Thank God he's approachable. They ain't, now listen, the Pope ain't got no direct hotline access that me and you ain't got. Maybe not as good a one. I'm telling you tonight, thank God if you're a Christian. I don't care if it's Marty. I don't care if it's Miss Dot. I don't care if you're little, if you're big, if you're old, if you're young. You can walk boldly to the throne of grace and talk to him about whatever you need to talk about. That's a blessing, y'all. That's a blessing. You say, man, I wish I had somebody to talk to. He's your best friend. Talk to him. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He's a friend that's well known. Somebody sent me a, a letter the other day. Uh, email, I can't remember what them stupid things are. You don't write them no more. Uh, you just say them and send them on, a, send them on an electronic thing. And uh, they, they paid me a compliment. I appreciate it. They said, uh, I appreciate Brother Danny because he's approachable. That's what they said. They said he's approachable. said you can talk to him. All of these other big shot preachers, you can't ever get to them. You always get their secretary. You always get somebody. No, he's too busy. He can't answer the phone call. I didn't tell them that I am not a big shot preacher. Uh, but they, they, <laughs> they put me up there. Uh, all they said, uh, uh, there's, uh, uh, there's one guy the other day, come, you know what I'm talking about, drove all the way to Texas, see Joel Osteen, and uh, he wouldn't talk to him. And he come here and I talk to him. Ain't that a blessing? Amen. Uh, but I tell you what, a lot of people say, and that woman said, Brother Danny's approachable. He's approachable. And I want to be like that. I want to be like the Lord. I don't ever want to give people the impression that I'm up here and you're down there. That ain't the way it is. I'm telling you, brother, uh, the, the biggest drunk in Burke County tonight could go right to the Lord and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and get washed in the blood and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm glad our friend is approachable. Don't ever get it in your head that he don't want you to come to him. I've heard people say, I just done so, so bad, Brother Danny, that he don't want, he, I'm, I'm scared. No, he, he's sitting there waiting on you to come to him. 
He's waiting on you to come and get right. He's your sympathetic friend. Who was it that touched the blind man by the side of the road? It was him. Who was it that met the woman at the well that had had five husbands and was shacking up with a man? It was him, brother. He wasn't down there with these big shot religious friends uh, having some kind of a Bible study. He was out there touching the blind man, touching the woman at the well, touching the sick by the pool of Bethesda. You know where the Lord was? He was with the poor. He was with the down and out. He wasn't a big shot. He come to help people that need sympathy. You need sympathy tonight, he'll help you. Number three, he is a faithful friend. He's a friend that will always be there. Many young people get their heart broke. Girls, when they're 11, 12, 13, 14, and they feel their first, they fall in love or whatever it is. That's debatable. Uh, uh, I believe, like, I believe, I do believe a teenager can fall in love, but it's like um, your body gets way ahead of your brain. And it's like this. you are got a half full cup of, of water like this. That's half full. I don't know if you can see it, but it's about right there. And that's the way it is when you're young. But anyway, she, she meets this boy. She falls in love with him. She's 15, and she thinks it's as it. Me and him's going to be together forever. This is how many times have you heard that? Oh, it's going to be him forever, never, never, and me and him. Poor dumb girl, don't even realize she don't even she's not even smart enough to realize it's going to be a long time before Mr. Wright comes along. And boy, she 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 gets her heart broke and she cries and she cries and I can't believe him. He asked me out and now he's over there. I'm dating and they ain't never even been nowhere together. But they're dating. I don't understand that. Uh, they're twelve. I'm dating so and so. Have you ever been nowhere? No. Well, you ain't dating nobody if you ain't been nowhere. That's what a date is. Certain time, certain place, for a certain purpose to meet certain birth. That's what a date is. See them at school every day and waving is not dating. Nut. You're just trying to sound grown up. But anyway, uh, he, the Lord won't do you like that. I mean, he'll run in when the world runs out. When you're sitting there, brother, and lost everything you've got, when you think the world's over, when, when your house burns down, when you lose their job, when your husband or wife walks out the door and everybody's over there having a good time and you're sitting at home by yourself, right then, brother, that's when your friend will come up and sit beside you and say, I'll never leave you. I'll never say, let me tell you, I've spent, I've spent many a day by myself. I've spent Christmas days, more than one, by myself, not see another human being all day long and then just read my Bible and, and pray and turn the ball game on or walk up in the woods. I've spent uh, days like that when I thought I did not have one friend in this world. But I'm telling you, in the wee hours of the night, he'd be there. I remember I used to lay there in the bed at night. I'd why not look up and I'd say, God, what am I going to do? God, Lord, are you left me? God, what am I going to do? And I'd turn the radio on and the McCameys would come on there way back years ago. And it's old Peg, get on there and say, he's the God of the mountain and the God of the valley. And it wasn't long. I'd be shouting, brother, laying there in the bed. You know why? He is a sympathetic friend. He's a faithful friend. He don't run out just because everybody else does. He'll be right there with you through thick, through thin. Come hell or high water, he'll be there with you. He's a faithful friend. He never lets you down. Never forget Charles Wagle, Dr. Charles Wagle, great preacher. And He's a preacher and come home one day and there's a note on the cabinet from his wife said, I don't love you no more. I don't want to be married no more. And she's gone. She was gone. He didn't even get to talk to her. It broke his heart. And he went over to the piano and sat down and wrote the song, I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus since I found in him a friend so kind and true. I'd love to tell you how he, uh, how he came to his life to save me. There's no other friend been so true or something like that. I forget the words. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind and true. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares for you. 
Number four, I'm done. He's a sacrificial friend. The Bible said, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his wife, life for his friends. Husbands, wives, all of you. Enough to die for you. He to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. The last, before the last supper there, before his last few days, he had the disciples there. And you know what the Bible said he did? Here's the Son of God, Jesus Christ now, the, the perfect, spotless God's Lamb, God in flesh. He, it, the Bible said the disciples were sitting around, and he didn't say, look, guys, I'm dying for you. You ought to appreciate that. Good night, I'm giving up my life for you. Don't you feel sorry for me? Don't you, you know what he done? He took a towel and girded himself and took a basin and got down and he washed Matthew's feet. Then he moved to the next one and washed John's feet. And then he moved to the next one and washed Thomas's feet. The Son of God washed their feet. And when he came to Peter, Peter said, Lord, you don't, you're not going to wash my feet. That's all. I can't stand the thought. I, you're my Lord. You're my Savior. And, and the Lord said, now, I've got to wash Peter. You have no part with me. And that, that's, uh, that's, that's, that was a custom they had in that time. They walked on deserts, you know, and everything. It was custom for people to wash it. There was a very act of humility. Now, you don't have foot washings today. You can, but there's nothing in the Bible that says, we're supposed to, it's, not a, it's not a church ordinance. There's only two church ordinances, baptism and the Lord's Supper. And we don't, I mean, I've, I've been in some of them. They're sort of weird. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's not, Jesus didn't command us to have a service and everybody wash each other's feet. But we should be willing to and humility enough to humble ourselves to our brother or sister. Like when somebody comes to your house, may I take your coat? May I get you a chair? May I wait on you? That's the, the form of a servant that he portrayed to his disciples. Isn't that something? That's God coming down and saying, I'm going to serve you. That's a sacrificial friend. And then they put him on the cross and nail him. He didn't have to do that, folks. Nobody made him do that. Jesus did that because he's your best friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. A, stand, a friend sticks up for you even when you're not there. You know that? You know somebody that's your real friend, they don't talk with you uh, and then go over here and talk about you. Amen? Amen? Somebody told me the other day, they said, don't worry, Brother Danny. If they say anything about you, I got you back. There's a friend. There's a friend. You don't go there and say, well, you're preaching. Yeah, I know. I'm, I feel the same way. <laughs> that ain't a friend. You know what the Lord does? He'll stick up for you when you ain't there. Stick up for you when you ain't there. He don't take sides against you. You know what? I've, I've never heard it preached like this, though, but I thought about this this evening when I was getting ready for this service. And I thought, you know what? I'm not there in heaven tonight. And God's on his throne. And he's sticking up for me. And I'm not even there. I'm not even there. But he's sticking up. He's put, making intercession for us. What a blessing. i tell you what I want us to do. Come on, Miss Desi. I want us to find that song. Is it in here? Somebody tell me what page off. What a friend we have in Jesus. 70? 3, 341? 341. Let's all get a hymn book. Stand turn number 341. Tonight, let's sing this about our friend. You want to do that? Let's sing this about our friend. What a friend. I want you to sing this song and I want you to let it mean more to you than you ever have before and mean it from your heart. Ready? First verse. Ready? What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Sing it now. Everything to God in prayer. Sing now. Oh, what peace we often hold. Oh, what needless pain. 
thing we bear All because we do not care Alright This second verse said Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? You having trials or temptations tonight? On this second verse, I want you to just come down here and get down on your knees and get your heart where God can bless you and trust Him and say, Lord, you're my friend and you're my best friend. He's your best friend, remember? He's your best friend. That girl said, I need to hear that. So I thought, maybe y'all need to hear that tonight. He's your best friend. Just want to remind you, uh, you already knew all this. I just want to remind you, you've got a friend. You've got a friend. Hallelujah. Now, if you need to come on this second verse, just put your book down, come down here, and let's pray. The rest of us will sing. Ready? Say a verse. Have we trial and tempt? Come on. Just get out on your knees. There trouble anywhere. Take now. Sing now, G. Uh oh, I'm sorry. Faithful, never. Who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. One more. All right, if you need to come now on this last one, amen, on this last one, come on, sing it out with us tonight. Ready? Are we weak and heavy laden? Sing now. Comfort with a load of care. Sing. Precious Savior, still our Everybody sing, do thy friends despise for say, hey, hey, get to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thou will find a soulless there. He's playing tonight. He's your best friend tonight. He's your best friend. Let that stick in your mind this week when it gets hard at work. He's your best friend. Let that stick in your mind at school this week when somebody sort of sneers at you because you, that you know it's because you're a Christian. He's your best friend. You got a friend they'll never have. You got a friend they'll never know unless they get saved. Feel sorry for them. Don't envy the wicked. Feel sorry for them. Sin to envy wicked people. Feel sorry for them. Look at their end. Amen. Take it to the Lord in prayer. He's your best friend. Get that in your heart tonight. Amen. All right. You learned today at church that birds can talk. Uh, I left out that verse. I, I, I don't know why I left that out. You know, over in Ecclesiastes, it said you've got to be careful what you say about somebody for a bird of the air shall carry the voice. A demon. Have you ever heard about I said, how'd you know that? Oh, a little bird told me. Where'd that come from? Who thought that up, reckon? You see, I, see what I'm telling you? All that old-timey stuff like that, there's a reason for it. A little bird, you sure did. A demon told you, and you gossiped it on to somebody else. Amen. All right. We're going to have just a little short meeting.